It's not what I expected, but I actually like it even more. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Secret of Nim. This is a film that I've wanted to see for quite some time, but I've never gotten around to it. And after I did my Titan AE Forgotten Marvel video essay, my roommate actually bought the film because she was a big fan of it. And the first off, I've got to say, I've always had a wrong title for this film in my mind. I always thought it was The Secret Life of Nymph. I don't know why. I heard someone say it and I think I just took it. But this is one of Don Bluth's underrated gems from what a lot of people have said and I can see why. Not only is the animation amazing, not only is the music really good, there's a lot of cool little animation techniques that, while maybe not pioneered, still were pretty impressive, especially for the time. The voice acting is exceptional and it's a great homage of what Disney used to be in terms of its animation style, its voice style, just the presentation of the whole film. And the story is bonkers. This is the most bizarre idea I've seen in a long time, but it also makes me realize that imagination in terms of storytelling for children using rodents, animals, just regular animals, died with Stuart Little. That's the last time that there's ever been a really bizarre, out there, animal oriented film or story that was really, really good. For those of you who were born in the 90s, some of you obviously were born in the 80s, you might remember there was a time where we were seeing animated, whether it was stop motion or hand-drawn animation of tales, usually novels or short stories about animals in certain situations and certain sort of lifestyles. They live like normal humans, but they're not because they're animals. I remember some claymation one about a frog and some other friends in the grass living by a waterfall or like a, a farm or a windmill which also makes me think of the tv show that had those gerbils and hamsters there's also that story about the mouse with the red car in the house this just harkens back to a time when i was a kid and this kind of storytelling using these types of characters but having a modernized style to them but still having them hide amongst humans was the Toy Story before Toy Story, in terms of a secret society amongst things that we know, but we really don't know. Because when I originally heard about Secret of Nim and what I saw from the posters and just from what people told me, it sounded like it was an entirely fantasy realm sort of story. I didn't even realize that the main character was a mouse. Sometimes I'm observant, sometimes I'm very not. But the film follows Mrs. Brisby and her quest to try and save her kids because they live in this concrete block which is in the middle of this farmland. However, the farmland is obviously getting worked on by the owners of the farmland. They need to move their home. However, her youngest son has pneumonia. Very interesting that this not sick, particularly pneumonia. This movie's asking kids to know a lot. <laughs> but back in the day, probably they knew more about pneumonia because pneumonia wasn't as treatable. Obviously it is treatable, but it still killed people. It still kills people now. Obviously not as much. I had walking pneumonia once before and it doesn't feel great. She, she goes to this like mechanic do-it-all sort of mouse to try and have her bring up a remedy to try and save her kid, but she can't because of all the farm stuff that happens. Which brings me into my first point about how this film has really great visual storytelling. We see the farm machinery coming down the road. We see the bunnies doing the da, 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 to act as like a warning haxlon or as a warning siren. Sort of like how we have a warning siren for tornadoes or natural disasters. This is the natural siren for the animals to, hey, this is coming. In that exact moment too, actually, my opinion of Brisby's sister or aunt or whoever, who I thought was just a stuck up old bitty, comes in and saves the day, which is a great scene. I, I thought this was a great change of her character and right off the bat, I'm already impressed. I'm already seeing a different sides of these characters than I was expecting. I'm expecting it to follow the norm of these sort of animated films, but it doesn't. It does do a little bit of twist and turning here. Cause even Brisby, she's an honorable character. She has courage, but she's also a bit of a ditz. She didn't know anything about her her husband apparently which kind of brings me into a few of the issues of this film while there are some really cool magnificent and very unique kind of elements to the story not everything is explained obviously they're timed for budget and there are some points of mystery in the film that maybe the novel i would hope far better explains but there are a few things that are lacking which i'll bring up a little bit later so now that she doesn't have the medicine anymore she needs to figure out what to do so she goes to the great owl which super cool big old owl these big as the moon eyes and these cops webs that are on him he's an ancient creature neither for good nor evil but has the ability of foresight which also the rat 
cats do too, which there is a bit of a fantasy element into this story, even if it's not fully fantasy. She then goes to the rats, and that's when the movie takes another turn because there's a whole rat hierarchy. These are apparently lab rats. It brings me into the first point where this film is really goddamn dark. You see them getting injected with all these weird things, and this part is terrifying. It shows the mishandling and the, the cages and just the horrifying nature of animals in these sort of situations. She even gets to meet the ancient Notre Dame kind of like rat. I find it interesting that this guy knows that there's this scar motherfucker rat. I know he's gonna try and kill me, but I ain't gonna do anything about it. Oh, by the way, here's this gem that that has no explanation. It really doesn't have any explanation other than that it's a beacon of showing someone who is courageous at heart. But then she goes into the house, she tries to drug the cat so that they can do the maneuver to taking her house out of the ground. And then Notre Dame gets crushed, obviously. Not even gets crushed by the house, he gets crushed because evil, obvious, bad dude rat cuts the cords. There's this sword fight that just kind of appears. Like, okay, these rats are highly intelligent, yet they're fighting like chivalrous knights. Kind of interesting. We see him get stabbed. Ah! Then after the most MLG Call of Duty knife throw I've ever seen. Great work. The house sinks, but Mrs. Brisby is able to unlock the power of the gemstone. It raises the house from the ground and everything is saved. Oh yeah, I forgot. Well, I didn't forget, I purposely didn't talk about him. There's this crow whose name is Jeremy. He's a bit of a creepy idiot. And that's the secret of Nim. I like that actually, that Nim actually had nothing to do with any sort of fantasy or occult being. It actually was just literally the name of the lab where the rats came from. Again, really cool little ingenious elements of mystery and science into a story about land animals, which just so happens to have a little bit of fantasy because Notre Dame dude has the ability of all these like, he's able to levitate shit. They don't explain that either. You're kind of going along for the ride for this film and that's what you're getting. You're getting a great ride. I enjoyed the artistic style. I enjoyed the characters. I enjoyed the story. I especially enjoyed actually how the actors capture their audio. Certain actors you can tell they were in different studios or they just had different mic equipment, particularly Brisby and Evil Scar Rat Guy. Those two sound like they were recorded in different studios because they have this sound, this kind of fizz echo to it that reminds me of watching the classic Disney film. It gives it a homey, uh, homage-like feeling to the animation of old, which I don't know if that was intentional or not, especially being that they actually had to do a bit of audio trickery. The main character's name is actually Frisbee. However, they were afraid that they were gonna get in trouble with the actual toy company, Whammo, who owned the Frisbee, but they had done all the audio already. They had to go into the physical audio tracks and put in bruh noises that were recorded by the actors in other situations and layer that on top. I don't know that much about audio mixing, but I can imagine that doing that back, what, 30, 40 years ago now might have been a bit more challenging than it would have been now with a computer. So I gotta give the film credit for that. Overall though, I really do enjoy this movie. I love all the aspects about it. Sure, there are a few story elements that aren't explained, just don't get enough time to. The main character is a bit of a dip, but the core traits of her character are still honorable. It's not as dark as Land Before Time, but I think it's better than Land Before Time in my opinion. Anyways, I'm gonna give The Secret of Nim a 5 out of 7. I enjoyed this movie. I would definitely suggest watching it. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. If you enjoyed this review, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign but we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.